Like a thriving metropolis of high-rises and suburbs, the coral reef is a complex and vibrant home to a fantastic diversity of plants and animals. Found in the clear, warm waters of the world's tropical seas, coral reefs can stand hundreds of miles. Like precious jewels strung just beyond the water's edge, they are true treasures of our water planet. I'm Felipe Cusco. Here off Key Largo, Florida, my team and I are joining scientists on an amazing mission. For two weeks, they have spent night and day beneath the ocean waves documenting dramatic changes in these fragile coral reefs. Coral reefs are the largest structures ever built on our planet. A vast network of pillars, caves, and channels made by some of the world's tiniest animals, coral polyps. Each coral polyp builds a small skeleton to live in, like a miniature teacup made of limestone. Tiny polyp next to tiny polyp until there are millions, each connected to its neighbor in a vibrant living patchwork. Each successive generation of coral polyps builds layer upon layer of ever-expanding structure. Whole cities under the sea, home to millions of creatures in a kaleidoscope of color and form. These interweaving structures serve as welcome sanctuaries for skittish schools of brilliant fish, ready to flee at the slightest signs of danger. Predators lurk here. Barracudas hover, poised to strike. Sharks patrol endlessly. Inside the honeycomb of coral, honey shrimp, sinuous eels, and sea urchins abound. It is only because of coral that this intricate tapestry exists. It is this tiny creature's ability to capture energy from the sun and harvest a meager food supply that lets it take root here. Coral is the foundation species of entire coastal ecosystems around the world. Without coral reefs, these nutrient-poor waters would be like a harsh desert landscape, swept by undersea winds. Like our great rainforests, biodiversity under the sea has yet to be fully understood, even as these fragile habitats are threatened by the forces of human development. Yet the value of coral reefs is immense. For millennia, they have fed a fish-hungry world, and their fantastical sights draw visitors by the millions each year. Chemicals locked within the reefs, plants and animals hold secrets for treating human diseases like cancer and HIV. But coral reefs are disappearing. Like ghostly monoliths, dead coral is a shocking reminder that climate change, pollution, and destructive fisheries are threats too great to ignore. Sponges and their role in the nitrogen cycle on the coral reefs. Now I understand that hard corals, traditionally the foundation species here in the Keys, are disappearing. But there used to be about 60% coral cover, and now it's down only to about 10%. And that climate change, global warming, is one of the causes. That's right. A lot of science. Global warming has caused sea temperatures to rise. This shift of barely a degree, though subtle to us, is drastic for the highly sensitive corals. As coral struggles to survive, other creatures, like sponges, are taking over. These are water samples that I took from a sponge right here on Conk Reef. So the coral reef really is a habitat with a shifting foundation. We just don't understand what the long-term impacts are, which is why we need scientific research like this. That's right. It's very important that we understand. The Aquarius underwater habitat gives scientists a unique ability to explore these questions. Sixty feet down, nestled in the reef, Aquarius is truly a home under the sea. The scientists who live and work here have the luxury of time to explore the reef and make observations far beyond the brief excursion of their surface-bound colleagues. On this mission, they've brought to life experiments designed by future scientists and explorers like you. Today, for a brief moment, let's join them. Good afternoon and welcome to Aquarius. We're here at the watch desk in Key Largo, Florida. Now I know that a lot of you were expecting us to be underwater at 50 feet on Aquarius Broadcasting Lot, but unfortunately, as some of you may be aware, 
Hurricane Katrina put a damper on our plans, and the scientists that had saturated on Aquarius for the last almost two weeks had to come up early from the mission, and they came up early yesterday afternoon and yesterday midday. So we were able, though, earlier on Wednesday to film some of the experiments that we had planned on filming underneath down, at, uh, down on Aquarius, which we'll show you shortly. But I'm joined here by, Kaya, by, excuse me, by Melissa Winch, a good friend of mine I just met a few days ago now, who's a, a diver and a fellow explorer here on Aquarius. Melissa, how long have you been diving on Aquarius? I've been diving the last 15 months, and I've been on Aquarius many, many times. Many times. Huh? So, so, so you got certified about 15 months ago. Yeah. And so how old are you now? 15. 15, outstanding. So you've already had an opportunity to dive in Aquarius several times, and, and what do you think about that? I think it's a very neat experience. Very I exciting. love diving on Aquarius. Really? really? Yeah. Outstanding. That's very cool. Very exciting. So, you know, we have a couple questions here that I wanted to answer before we, we continue. And the first question is from Evan, and he's asking, how long did it take you to dive? It took me three days to learn how to dive. It did four training dives, and then all of my real dives. My first dive was actually on Aquarius. First dive on Aquarius? Well, you know, not many people get to do that because Aquarius is a one-of-a-kind facility in the world. There's nowhere else that is an actual living laboratory submerged permanently at 60 feet. Another question, you know, that we had from, a, from another interested student was, are there any sharks that threaten scientists on Aquarius? Now, I've only had the opportunity to dive in Aquarius a few times, so Melissa actually has more experience than I do, so I think she's the best one to answer that question. Are there any sharks that threaten scientists on Aquarius? I have never seen a shark that's threatened me on Aquarius. No, but I understand you have run into a shark, isn't that right? Yes. One time, me and my friend Kaya were diving, and the sharks, they were together like this, and we were right in the middle, and they came out and went back around, just right around us. So you didn't feel threatened at all? No. Well, there you have it. There aren't any sharks that threaten scientists in Aquarius. And in fact, sharks have a lot more to fear from us than we do from them. When there's only about 60 shark attacks a year, we kill 100 million sharks every year for various different reasons. And, and so sharks are, you're, you're more likely to get, get stung by a bee or hit by lightning than getting attacked by a shark. So sharks aren't threatening at all, isn't that right? Right. They get a bad rap. Right. Definitely. So this next segment that we're going to show you is about sponges. I was able to dive with Melissa Southwell, one of the scientists from the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, and she was able, she and I were able to communicate over a comm system and an AGA mask, a full face mask system, and talk a little bit about sponges and the experiments that they're conducting in, in and around Aquarius over the last few weeks and understanding how the sponges and the coral reef ecosystem works. So we're going to roll to that page, but please stay tuned because we're going to be taking your questions and we're going to be feeding those questions over the next 15 minutes or so. We're going to be taking those questions right after this segment. <laughs> 